Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time today. You're welcome. Anytime. We'll get started here with Martin Frank and Dave Zangaro. Hey, Jeff. Welcome back uh, for another season. Um, I, want, I mean, obviously, the big thing on the offensive line seems to be the left tackle situation with, with Andre Dillard coming back from injury and Jordan Maylotta. You know, he got you know, a bunch of experience uh, last season. How, how do you see that um, position battle shaping up, you know, heading into training camp, or is there one? Oh, there's definitely one. And I think that anytime um, there is competition like that, and it's that close that it brings the best out of both players. Both players have to be on every day, all day, because it's a competition, and whoever's the most productive and whoever does the best, uh, who has most the best value uh, going into the season will be the starter. Go ahead, Dave, and then EJ. Hey, Jeff. Ultimately, who makes that decision, uh, the starter at left tackle, and what do you want to see out of whoever wins that job? Can you repeat the question, Dave? Sure. Uh, ultimately, who makes the decision as to who the left tackle is, and uh, whoever wins that job, what do you want to see from them? Well, I think, uh, I think obviously, um, as the position coach, uh, I'm obviously going to have input on that. But I think, ultimately, the head coach will be the one that will approve or disapprove. Of, you know, he'll, he'll make that final decision along with the input that I provide him. I think that the player, to answer the second part of the question is, um, the player that, that, that is, because I really, the four players that are there, the, the starters, um, just looking at, I know I don't want to go ahead of, of myself, but because you asked me a question, and I'm not trying to do that, but really impressed with the, um, with the group. We've got a lot of depth in, in the way the guys are moving out there. Um, the last couple of weeks was just impressive, really impressive. And I don't usually say stuff like that. You guys know me, but... Um, I expect that player to <clears throat> fit right in with the rest of those players, be accountable to all the things that are going on. Because um, when you watch the synchronization, you watch how synchronized the group the group is. Uh, I want that player to be just like that. EJ and then Bo. Hey, Jeff. I wanted to ask you about Landon. I know you haven't been able to see a ton of him because of the injury, but what did you see from him on tape? And when it comes to developing interior line guys like that, what are some of like the most important uh, traits or characteristics that you look for? Well, when you look at the job description of an interior player, say guard, uh, like Brandon Brooks, who I just am amazed. I'm amazed at. I mean, the, the guy's unbelievable. But um, I know you'll ask me that later. But um, for that player to be or have as much value to any organization. Number one, he has to displace interior, interior, these guys are big now. He has to be able to move those type of players, um, which is really hard to do. And then you also have to be able to be able to anchor and keep the pocket extremely firm in protection. So those are two really important factors, and he can do that. I saw that on film. I saw him do that as a center at, at Alabama. I saw him, I watched all his guard play. Um, so I think he has the, the, the capability of, I don't think, I know he has the, he has the ability to do those two things. Well, and now what I would like, if you said, hey, furthermore, what would you like to do to help him improve, you know, because that's my job. All right, I want to see this guy accelerate his feet on contact. When contact is made, I want to see his feet going, you know what I mean? I, I think that's something that he and I talked about that um, immediately as soon as we drafted him. Go ahead, Bo, and then Mike. If I can follow up on on Landon, um, you know how important when you're when you're evaluating prospects in the draft is sort of their off the field uh, demeanor and, and and work ethic and stuff like that. And, and what about that stood out as it relates to Landon? Um, I think everybody's different. Every player's different. I like that. Um, the room that we have, it's obviously it's very, it's very different. Every single guy is, is, and it's really cool. It's awesome. I mean, that's the great thing about, like, you know, you said, welcome back, Stout. First question, I, you know, not question, but which I appreciate. But, okay, I love this organization. I love the ownership. 
uh, Mr. Laurie and, and, and how he, he treats people. And most of all, I love the players I coach. So to be able to um, be around these type of guys, they're all different. Everybody's different. So um, I just think that Landon brings another type, just a, just a confident, um, mature, um, serious. That's the one part of it all that they all have. That All of them have this one thing in common is it's very, very important to them. Football is very important to them. Team, teammates are very important to them. To each of them, that's that's the one ingredient that they all have, and he's the epitome of that. Mike, and then Jeff McLean. Something that's also really important to them, at least that we've been able to glean, is is you coming back. And when there are reports and, and rumors about you potentially leaving, what were the conversations like with you and the players, and how did you kind of squash that or, or resolve uh, their their kind of worry about you potentially moving on? I don't know that I squashed anything. I don't know that half the half. The, I, I don't know that any of the players that I coached actually believed that 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 was really true. Um, um, so I, I didn't squash anything, to be honest with you. I, I didn't. It's like anything else. You, there's in this business. There's you know, you hear these. You hear these things uh, uh, for, from player standpoint. You hear all kinds. Of, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really worry about that kind of stuff. I mean, they've just been very vocal about how appreciative they are that you're back. What does that mean to you to hear? <clears throat> well, I really do give of myself. I, 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 I think it's very important. I, I'm number one. I'm passionate about the game. I'm passionate about developing offensive linemen. And so I think that shows. I think the players appreciate that. And and it does. I I. I I, I appreciate the fact that a player sees the fact that I'm going, I'm doing everything in my power to try to help them. Now, I might not, you might not, every guy might not feel that way, trust me, because I'm not easy sometimes, okay? So, and but that's okay. I'm, my heart is in the right place. I'm here to develop and help guys make a living. Go ahead, Jeff, and then Zach Berman. Uh, Jeff, as the only coach to precede the previous coaching staff and then survive its firing, uh, you have the unique perspective of being inside and knowing and watching what uh, happened, what occurred. Um, so from your perspective, what went wrong that ultimately resulted in Doug Peterson being fired and Carson Wentz ultimately being traded? <laughs> I love Jeff McLean. I don't know Jeff. I don't, I don't know what am I? I don't. I don't know what happened and why Carson. I have no idea. That's not my. That's not. That's not my lane, Jeff. I don't. That's not. I don't know. What's your next story going to be, Jeff? After this one, what's the next one? How do you know? You don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Honestly, I know this. I know what I have to do to help <clears throat> Jordan Malata and Andre Dillard look just like the other guys they're playing next to. I know that. I know how to teach a six-man protection as good as anybody. Okay, I know how. That's what I know. The rest of that stuff, I'm not going into that. I don't, I don't know that stuff. Maybe when I'm done and I'm retired, we'll come work. I'll do a podcast. I don't know. Maybe. But I don't know that. I don't know what happened there with that. Jeff, I'm being honest. I'm, 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 I'm not even, you know. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Zach, and then Nick Fierro. Hey, Jeff, nice to see you again. Uh, Good to see you. Obviously, with, with Brandon Brooks and, and Lane Johnson, both are obviously proud guys, and there's demonstrated performance, but there's also been missed games during these 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 past few years. Um, what gives you confidence that they're going to be back at the level they were before injuries? Watching them on the field here the last couple of weeks, I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm not – I'm being on. I'm being straight out on. I mean, I watched Brandon Brooks. I did not know what to expect. I'll be honest with you. And I told Brandon, I said, I don't know what he came in blazing off the ball. Now I know it's just no pads on, and I know he's striking bag, but he was striking the bag. Now he, the, 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 the the young fellas that were holding that bag, they felt them. And Lane Johnson, you know, after what he went went through with the foot, I mean. He's, he's, uh, his change of direction and his quickness and 
Is he 100 percent? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he's close. He's damn close, though. So I feel good that, you know, and I think that's part of the reason why we we have we have some good depth right now across the board. I think after what happened last year, I think everybody in the league is developed. I think both sides of the ball up front, everyone's making sure that there's enough depth so that if if things don't go right, that they they're covered. Go ahead, Nick, and then Les. Hi, Jeff. Not good to see you again. Good um, to see you too. I want to go back to that uh, left tackle spot, and particularly Andre Andre Dillard. Um, you know, last year, flashing back to last year, where you were with him, um, you were you guys were getting prepared to kind of go forward with him at left tackle. Uh, he looked like I apparently he had he had done what you wanted him to do, which was to add that upper body strength. <clears throat> and um, so, so where is he now? Uh, he says he's he's back even stronger than he was last year at this time before the injury. And uh, did you feel like he's added that strength both physically and mentally, you know, to play that position? You know, I really, I do, I really do enjoy talking to you guys. I really, I swear to you, I miss the, the I miss the interaction in the, in the auditorium and all. And, and Jeff, I wasn't trying to elude your question. I really don't know. I swear to God, I don't know what, how am I supposed to know that kind of stuff? But, but so, um, Andre Dillard, here's when it all started, okay, in my opinion. So he goes on IR. Some, we had a lot of guys go. We had seven offensive linemen go on IR this year. That's unbelievable. This guy stayed here. He never left. Andre Dillard was in every single position meeting. Andre Dillard sat in the front of the room with a notebook and took notes on every single thing I said. As a matter of fact, and I didn't even know if that was lit. I was like, can you allow, are you allowed to be like, and so I would hit him with questions during the meeting, game planning questions. And I said, Andre, if you're going to be here, then I'm going to make it like you're playing. Let's, 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 let's play with our magical friend. Let's pretend that you're going to go play in the game. And then maybe we won't develop the rust and the barnacles and all the, you'll just feel like you're, and your mind will stay sharp. So that's kind of how we played it out all year with Andre. I think that's kind of how it's really started with him because I do see, I see a hungrier, a hungrier guy. I see a guy who is more serious. I'm just being honest with you. This is, this is the, going through the meetings and going into the out there in the field and watching him move. Him and him and Isaac move like they're pretty. They're, they move like they're identical. They like the way they move together. They're pretty quick. Those guys. Um, so I, and he's thicker and he's stronger than he, he, he look, I mean, you guys haven't seen him. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's thicker, up, he's bigger, he's, he's heavier. Uh, I really do liked what he's done in the off season. We have time for a few more. So we'll go to Les, John and Ed. Hey, stop. Good hey, to Les. see you. Good to see you uh, too. Uh, to further belabor the left tackle position, uh, does one of them come in? to camp ahead of the other in the competition. And also, I, I guess they're different style tackles. How would you assess what each of them is good at and what each of them needs to work on to be, you know, what you want there at, as a starter? Um, yeah, there's specific things that, 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 that I have. Like, I have this thing I call one up and then one forward. And that would be like this. That would be like, um, hey, uh, Jordan. Now, I don't want to divulge all these things because then it's like giving, giving away, you know, for other, you know, every inch in this league matters. <laughs> Trust me. So I would say, Jordan, here's your one up this week. You have to be able to um, stop this particular move, okay, in a pass rush. And until we... Until we get this down, Pat, and we sh we have it on film where you have absolutely shut this thing down, <clears throat> then I'll give you the next. Then you then it's one forward. Then it's the next thing, and that each player, it's like going to work out at the gym. Like everybody has a different workout, like for their makeup, and it's that way with these two players. They each they each know from me what those things are that they need to work on. And is one ahead of the other going into camp? No, no, no. They're going to both be given an opportunity. Now, there's going to be, 
you know, uh, you know, Nick's got, you know, he doesn't have a lot of rules now, but, you know, he's got, he's got a couple things that he's going to address and, and that's it. Other than that, I mean, come in in great shape, come in. in great. Here's what's great about, I tell the, I just gave this speech like a half hour ago before we left the field to the young players, because this is it. I said, look, the next couple weeks, here's what I would suggest. Here's my suggestion to you, because I've done this for a few years and I know how when you get back here in preseason camp, it's exciting and all that, but it is hot and it is, uh, you know, eventually uh, after so many practices and, and walkthroughs and meetings and it, it not only gets physically draining and stressed, but you mentally from the, all the meeting time and all the, you know, you don't really do anything but just meetings and football and go sleep and come back and do it again. And so that becomes monotonous and it becomes – and so when you're in great shape, I mean literally you work your butt off. That's where you hear all these great stories about these guys that train and do all these extra things. <clears throat> you come into camp and you're physically in the best shape of your life. Now, the aches and the pains, they don't become, dis they don't become distractions. The, all the, the meeting times, you stay sharp, you keep your mind uh, sharp, you keep staying up good – positive frame of mind. These are all factors for you to have success during. And so when you're being evaluated, I'm, so I gave that speech a little while ago, but I, I think that's very important for both those players to walk in the door in the greatest shape. And we're going to assess that. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Hey, Stout. Good to see you. Um, Good to see you, John. Um, you mentioned that depth. Obviously, it probably wasn't fun for you last year when you had the 13, 14 different offensive line combinations. But how important was it for guys like Nate Herbig and Driscoll? You mentioned Mylotta, even Matt Pryor, Sua, to get those guys, those live reps in those games. I, I, it's hard. It's... It's going to sound strange, but I'm probably a little. I there was parts like I hate I, winning is everything. Winning, there's no feeling like winning. Believe me, but there is some. There's some. There's this satisfaction you get from some when watching when you have these meetings and you have the walkthroughs and then you watch it in a game, and there's all kinds of things that happen once the game starts. All 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 kinds of things happen. Movement. Uh, back, backers running downhill fast. Uh, the game is so much faster, blah, blah, blah. But when it actually happens on the film and you see like Sua Opeta and you see Jordan Malata in the New York Giants game and they have good D linemen, they're big and they're strong and they're, those guys are like, and you see those two guys come whistling off the ball and knocking guys back and putting them on their back. And, and, then, and then Boston Scott's running right in behind them for a seven, eight yard game. And they're executing the technique and the and the and the and the surfacing the block the way we the way I teach it to them, that's freaking awesome. I just feel so good about that when that kind of and that how and there's, and there's more of that that happened this year with some of these young guys. So it's like anything else. I've done this for 38 years, and I'll be honest with you, I've never been a better coach than I am right now. And a lot of that is because of the fact that number one, I'm still very passionate about it, but. I learned so many things along the way. I learned so many, so many things along the way about how to do things a little bit better, how to do things. You have to consistently evolve as the, as time goes on. I really believe that. Um, you know, you got sports science now. You have um, uh, you have all the analytics going on. You have oh, you, you, that information is valuable. All right? That's no different in technique, and that's no different in the players here. Jason Kelsey, Brooks, Lane Johnson, Isaac, um, and, and the younger players are starting. But but that's where uh, Landon is like right on that team. Like Landon, Landon's not afraid. Like he'll jump right into that conversation. Like like Isaac and Kelsey and Brooks, they'll jump right in and they're like, "Hey, it's like making a, a concoction or something." They're like talking about how we can maybe use a different technique to trick a guy or to give him an illusion of something else that we're doing. That's the fun part of it. And our players enjoy that, that part of it. And that's how I believe I've become a better coach uh, over the years, just by, by trying to make things a little, do things a little bit better. Okay. 
Um, I don't know if I answered your question, but. All right, last one here from Ed. Hey, Stout, good to see you. Good to see um, you. I, I just, a couple things. Um, Malata said he just about had a heart attack when he heard the reports you were going back to Alabama. I mean, how serious were those flirtations? And second of all, what kind of jump can we see expect to see in Jack Driscoll year one to year two? So you got me with two questions, okay? Uh, number one, um, uh, like I said to you earlier, um, this is the highest level of football, okay, that a coach could be. It's like, it's like the ultimate um, position. If you want to coach in the offensive line, okay, there's 32 coaches in the offensive line in the National Football League. That's it. And so this is the highest level. So I really love coaching in the National Football League. But most importantly, I love working for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I mean that sincerely. I love the town. I love the city. I love, the, I love everything about it. Okay. Um, plus my wife, uh, Allison, she's like, yeah, see ya, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this is our home. So uh, not that I would even have that conversation. But anyway, um, if I was going to co-coach back in, co in college football, that's where I would go. So um, <clears throat> the Driscoll thing, Jack Driscoll um, is such a pleasure to coach. He's He's so detailed. Like, I told him something during OTAs. We were using, and you guys have been down there by me, um, and they have those squares, those lines on the field. And I use those to see if guys can gain ground with their first step. In other words, are they stepping under themselves or are they gaining ground over the line? And I really believe every little inch matters. I said that earlier, okay? So we take this into consideration. We watch the film of the individual period. That's why we have the lines out there. I said to Jack, Jack, watching your movement, you're, you're behind. You're not, you're like stepping under your, you're not getting over the line because your stance is too wide. You know, get it a little, just gather yourself a little bit tighter, put your, so I go on to the next, the next player. Okay. And we start coaching. They go back out to the field. Boom. Jack Trisco, a little bit tighter, running over the line, ripping off the ball. The one thing about Jack Trisco from his college film and the senior bowl, and I'm, again, I'm just being totally honest with you, I under-evaluated his movement skill and his quickness. When I wrote him up and I did the report on him, I liked Jack Trisco, and I went to bat for Jack Trisco when the draft was going on, believe me. But I didn't think he – I didn't know he was as quick and as sudden as he actually is. And I don't know why that – I don't know why I don't like missing – writing something that's not – I don't know why that is. I don't know. I actually saw more in the senior bowl than I did in his college film, and I told him that. But this guy is quick and he's sudden. And he's smart. He's smart as hell. Him and uh, Nate Herbick have this – because they played again – they played with each other quite a bit, you know. So they have this little – connection going on. He's another guy, by the way. No one asked me about him. That guy there, he, um, that last game he played in the Washington game, he graded out extremely high. He had a he 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 played more plays than all these all the players. I, I did the numbers on him. I figured out eight hundred and something plays last year, uh Nate Herbick and did a really nice job. Thank you so much for the time today, coach. Anytime, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Dal. Take care.